Okay, hi guys. My name is Shannon Beveridge. Welcome back to my podcast. Uh, kind of crazy that I've been saying okay, hi guys on my channel for 10 years and like 95% of my following is women. I should, I could say, hey girls. Hi. Okay, hi girls. Anyway, I have recently been saying hi y'all and using y'all much more frequently because it's so gender inclusive. It's kind of awesome. So life hack, if you're looking to be more inclusive in your language, you can say y'all, but I guess it makes more sense for me because I am from Texas. So it's appropriate. It doesn't come out of nowhere, but y'all make sense. Anyway, if you're watching this, then you can obviously see I am not in my room. I am not in Los Angeles. I am in Toronto visiting my best friend, Vanessa. Uh, she's here right now with our other friends, Shannon Burns and Katya Temkin. And I'm sure they can hear me right now, which is stressing me out. But they're being respectful if they are in there, if they're listening. They're not saying anything. Anyway, last week I did a really quick intro joking about how uh, someone gave me feedback from my Rose and Rosie episode that the intro was too long. So then I did a really short one and then everyone was like, no, we love the intro. We love a long intro. So now I guess I'm talking more. But anyway, a uh, quick mental health check in. It's getting a little boring because they've just I've been like, I'm good every time. Uh, I am good. I'm happy. Feeling great. I didn't have therapy this week because um, Hillary needed a break from me. No, I'm kidding. I, I just was on this trip. So we took a break took a week off so I'll be back to therapy next week I think if I'm feeling anything mental health wise recently I'm feeling like self-conscious for some reason I don't know where that's coming from I don't know if it's because I'm posting so much and like editing myself so much that I'm thinking about myself too much like I just but it's hard to explain but I guess I don't know something I've recently been feeling is just really self-conscious oh look at my pinky nail if you're watching it's painted because I painted cat's nails at the restaurant we were just at. Anyway, how are you guys doing? I don't know why that happens to me every once in a while. The self-conscious thing. It's been a thing. I've had this happen before. And I don't know if it's because of being perceived more or if it's also just like sometimes just like the cycle of my period will make me really self-conscious. So if you can relate, hey, hey, hey. Hey there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Anyway, I'm really excited for this guest today. Sick to have someone from the UK on the podcast and in real life. So that was so fun. Love a good accent. I really, really love Madeline RG. If you don't know her, she has a podcast, which is great. But she's also so funny on TikTok. I love her TikToks. So if you haven't seen, definitely check it out. She does like amazing story time, little videos, and her stories are ridiculous. Like I can't believe her life is real. It's real and she's such a sweetie and we had such a good time. So I hope you like this episode. Uh, what else did I want to say? Oh, I also have one question for everyone. Well, not everyone. Well, yeah, everyone. Do you, where do you clip your nails? Because I do it sitting backwards on the toilet and I've always done that. And I need to know if that is a gay thing, if it's a universal thing. Where do you guys do it? Please let me know. Okay. Anyway. Enjoy this episode. I hope you guys love it and I love you. Okay, bye. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, podcasts are so awkward. I'm like, I ask people to ask me questions to ask you and then everyone's like, how do you guys meet each other? And I'm like, we're about to. <laughs> like, it's about to happen right now and then we'll start recording, which is like crazy. I like it. I think it's a good way to do it. Okay. You're confident. Got it. <laughs> I'm like, I can do this. Okay. Okay. What's your podcast called? Pretty Lonesome. Pretty Lonesome. Mm -hmm. Is this? Mm-hmm. That's sick. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay. Hi, guys. My name is Shannon Beveridge. I'm the host of X's and O's, a podcast where we talk about queer relationships and sex. And today, all the way from the UK, we have Madeline RG. I wanted to say RG, but I know no. I heard that nearly come out your mouth. I really, I thought about it. I thought about it, but no. You may know her from TikTok or her own podcast, Pretty Lonesome, and I'm so happy that she's in LA so we could do this podcast together. Uh, I DM'd you, and I, I, I thought we weren't going to do it. Because I didn't I, get back to you. 
<laughs> I was like, okay, I a swing and a miss. But then well, we're I still replied here. and I was like so excited and I was like, I'm gonna get back to you with a response in the morning and then I just, <laughs> and then I was like, Okay. That is just how I behave. No, and I, I behave the same way. I honestly was like got nervous too. And then I was like, Whoa. I was confident when I DM'd you, I was like, I could do that for sure. I can talk to a stranger and then I was like, What if I can't? What if I can't? So <laughs> Well you can. And I was so excited it. when I got that DM. Oh, that's so nice. Um the first time I ever like found out who you were is when you were joking about dressing like me, like my Tumblr. <gasps> oh <days>. my god! <laughs> so I'm gonna have to, to show you a few like, pictures yeah. from that phase of my life. I want to know what you think I was dressing like in 2016. Okay, well, I was dressing like maybe an older version of you in 2016. Okay. It was very like I would wear skin tight skinny yeah. jeans with like black jeans and like a rip in the knee and then like a, hole. a vans black t-shirt obviously skater yeah. girls uh -huh. did you ever skateboard no <laughs> yeah but likewise. my girlfriend at the time did Got and it. she she dressed a little bit like you as well <laughs> uh, i i feel bad that i was influencing a generation to wear those clothing like no. the the skater girl look when you're not a skater is just really not a vibe but it wasn't the best like phase of my life <laughs> 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 but Could hey do. it looked like i have this one video i'll show you when we finish this because it's the worst thing you'll ever see in your life it was like my friend's like school project and mm -hmm. she was doing it on like queer relationships and i was dressed exactly like you yes. and i did <laughs> so this whole really like know. skit with my best friend where we were like lovers that were like weren't allowed to be together and like we kiss at the end and i was like at the time i was so proud of it i was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> is this in high school yeah what the hell like you're 23 yeah. i'm 32. i feel like that's such a big difference between like your queer experience and my coming out experience like mm. you're in such a cooler generation of acceptance than i ever was yeah true did it feel that way i mean the fact that i wouldn't have even mentioned that i knew of gay people in high school i'd be like <laughs> what no <laughs> i've never even heard of that you could be gay didn't know yeah well i I feel like I was behind the times. A really? Little, yeah. Like I didn't know what the word bisexual was until I was like maybe 10 or 12. Okay. And then I remember when I learned and I was like, <laughs> what, you, what is that? What's <laughs> <laughs> hey, that could be, uh, that could be me. Um, yeah. And like, it was not, you, you would have struggled to like be gay at my school. Really? Yeah. Are you from like, where are you from? I'm from Sussex in the UK, which okay. is like, an hour outside of London. Okay. Like central is it like London. Suburby or is it like country like? Mm. It's like every small place in the UK is the same. Okay. It's just like the middle of nowhere. Like, I don't know. It's not a sub. Maybe it's a suburb. Do you I don't know, really know what, what a suburb <laughs> is? Sorry. Do we know what a suburb is? No. Uh, yeah, I don't even know how to explain. Like, any, like, it's like a tiny town. Yeah. Yeah. Like neighborhoods. Yeah. A lot yeah. of schools. Yeah. Kids parents family yeah, that's what it was okay but was it is it like cool there or like open-minded or it's weird because i feel like if i was talking to an american person i'd be like so are they democrats or republicans oh okay the our equivalent is like well it's like left and right wing left yeah. is like slightly better yeah. right is worse <laughs> <laughs> i think very easy description yeah. <laughs> yeah well it's it's definitely a mix like the place i went to school there was like three towns that went to this one school okay and every single town was on a completely different vibe really it was really weird yeah even though they were all like within half an hour of each other the town i came from was very like they would vote for like the green party which okay. is like not even some like a major running party it's Got like it. the ones that want to like save the trees like independent we have yeah we have similar yeah um and then the others were less inclined to do so but i think it was just like i don't know it was still like the word lesbian was like a dirty word oh, like for sure. it was a complete insult and like i didn't know any gay people until i think i was the was i the only gay person in my year maybe mm that's crazy that you even were out at all to me yeah well i only came out when i was 16 but that's still pretty young that's crazy <laughs> yeah i mean when i was 16 i was secretly making out with a girl so i was like halfway there but very secretly like very no one was ever gonna hear about that right um was that were you like did you have a girlfriend i did yeah when but, you were 16 yeah but it was it was also very secret 
got it's it. not a great situation got it mm-hmm. toxic vibe it was like it's the one ex that i like don't speak about on really media. yeah like i've never like like even done like a story time from that relationship because it's like so fucked but yeah i was dating her but it was a complete secret and mm. it was very like like bad and shameful and then i dated my second girlfriend when i was like 17 and we were out so that was kind of fun that yeah. was like completely That's different completely different than yeah. the shameful vibe yeah <laughs> i feel like i had it the girl i talked about my 16 year old girl i never talked about her either for really? like a really long time i would like allude to it but i wouldn't really talk that much about it and then she went on a podcast and talked she's really religious oh. and is straight now but she went on a podcast and talked about codependent friendships and said that like she had one codependent friendship that turned physical which was ours obviously <laughs> and she's like and then i found out she had two more after that and then she's like on this podcast talking about how you can find jesus and leave behind codependent friendships i'm like by codependent friendships did she mean your re- lesbian y- relationship yes. <laughs> yes I'm like, <laughs> Lovely. um that's not giving friendship to me but oh. okay but yeah once she started talking about that more publicly and she like fully was like i i what did she say she like dabbled in homosexual sin oh. so now i'm like okay well i don't have to protect you completely because you're like kind of said it but before that i was always really like cautious to talk about it because i'm just like i don't know i don't want to blow up someone's whole life it, and she's the only person i ever dated not being a public person you know oh, what right. I mean? Like so still everyone, no one knows who she is? No. Oh, good. No. But everyone I dated since then, I was always like posting online. So I feel like a little bit you knew what you were signing up for dating me. Like I'm yeah. a public person and I talk about stuff. But it's weirder like retroactively like to talk about someone who never knew I was going to be like oh, doing uh, yeah. this. Oh, yeah. 100%. You know? Yeah. Like that must be weird for you too because you you like blew up on social media fast. I mean, right? <laughs> I don't know. I but, feel like you did. Like, yeah. when did you start posting? Um, proper, like, like actually, I think like early twenty twenty two, like January maybe. That's crazy. And now you're signed with Alex Cooper's <laughs> podcast <laughs> yeah. network. It's like that, living in her back garden. <laughs> that's crazy. That's like two years. That's insane. Is that two? Yeah. That's yeah. really wild. Yeah. So and that must be so weird for the people who dated you before that to be like, oh my God, is she going to talk about me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they think about it because I don't speak to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I don't, I tr- I've like never, like I, there's one ex that was just like the craziest person I've ever met in my life. So I talk about her a lot because I can't not. Like she has to be talking. She about. also like when I started posting, she like I was still healing from the like shit that happening. she pulled. So I was like talking about it a lot. And I've done a couple podcast episodes even like recently just like alluding to it and we've never spoken about like, it. Like how what is she thinking somewhere? Do you think she consumes it? I have no idea. <laughs> I really don't know but like I actually reached out to her like maybe like a year ago now when things kind of started to happen for me and I was like oh I don't know how she feels about this because I do talk about her but I never like say the color of her hair or like yeah like sometimes I use like gender neutral pronouns just so people don't ever go looking for her because I don't want that even though I like don't like her I'm like I yeah. don't want to ruin your life um and I so I reached out to her and I was like hey do you want to grab coffee and like I just wanted to hear how she felt and like mm-hmm. give her a chance to be like can you not talk about this and like whatever if you don't want me to i won't um and she didn't respond no she did she said um she said no and then she said yes and then i said no (laughs) (laughs) because i was like no you lost your fucking chance bitch i was like i had like a 10 minute spur of empathy for her (laughs) and she said no and then she said yes and i was like never mind and then I think I reached back out and I was like, actually, actually, yeah, come. Oh and then, my God. And then we we just never did it. So I don't know. And now we don't speak again. Okay. Well, if that's any indicator of what your relationship was like, <laughs> I'm like stressed out for you. Thanks. It seems like probably you shouldn't talk. Yeah. But it is like a strange, it's strange with social media in general. Also like that anyone could go on and do a story time at any time. Like you don't even have to have a following, like any following and you could just go on TikTok and tell a story. Oh yeah. And it'll probably get millions yes. of views. It's crazy. Like that um, Risa Tisa lady. Yes. Who the I fuck did that. I marry? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. I'm like, whoa, anyone can just like, that's crazy. The barrier to entry social media now is like, 
there is none because everyone has a phone like, yeah who doesn't have a smartphone exactly. versus when i was starting and doing youtube stuff it was so much more like you really had to care enough to be like buying a computer like editing your videos and then posting right. them like it's just like a different vibe in general well the but, algorithm's so different i feel like and that's the main social media channel like you have to put effort into it because mm -hmm. like tiktok it'll just get picked up yeah if it's the right content mm -hmm. but not youtube in the same way no and now youtube is like i just feel like everyone's attention span has gotten so short but then at the same time everyone is starting a podcast so i'm a little confused i'm a little confused at how podcasts are thriving as me, well as they too. Are. <laughs> me too before i, I started mine i was like I don't think I deserve to have one because I don't listen to them. I, I felt the same way. But now I do listen to them because I'm like, what are we talking about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you guys filling an hour? What are you saying? Yeah, I, I have to watch. But it is like fun. It is. I get I get the appeal of a podcast just because it's so like conversational. I feel like some people just feel like they're especially when it's like two people. I feel like you feel like you're a part of a conversation. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I like listening to them, especially if I'm like working out. I'll always like put a True. funny one on. But yeah, it did take me a while to come around to the podcasting thing. Right? <laughs> also, I'm like, I'm not funny, so I don't listen to mine and like giggle. So, and I like. I find you funny. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much. I, I like am cringing the fuck out every time I'm editing them. I'm like, oh, why did I say that like that? Or why did I do that like that? But you start to get desensitized, I feel like. When I used to not do social media and like I would hear a video clip of my voice, mm -hmm. I would like want to literally die. Yeah. And now it's like, I don't. No, it you doesn't literally, me out at you all. You can't like care anymore. Mm -mm. It becomes so. So I feel like so many people have, I don't know if people ever said this to you, but people used to be like, what gave you like the bravery to post? Like yeah. a lot of people are scared to post ever on social media. Yeah. Mine was, I didn't think anyone was ever going to find it. So I was <laughs> like, there was no bravery. I was like secret, but I don't know. Now it's like you do it so many times. You're just like, I don't even, I don't even like believe that it's me sometimes. I, I know what you mean. They like I'll watch back me. and I'm like, what? Yeah. I'll see like an edit on Twitter or something. I'm like, it takes a second for it to even register in my brain that I'm watching myself. Mm -hmm. Like probably can't be healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck That's it. for our future selves <laughs> to deal with. I mean, I've already been online now for like 10 years, which is crazy. Wow. You've been in two? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck out there. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Fun. So, okay. We talk about relationships on here. Queer relationships specifically, I mm -hmm. guess, but... Do you feel like, I know I watched your podcast episode you did, I think it was your first episode, you talked about sexuality. Oh yeah. And you talked about like the fear of like changing labels and how there yeah. can be like some stigma around that. <laughs> I feel like that's so true. And I feel like it's weird because we give so, we give so much grace to people who come out later in life, mm -hmm. like go from being straight to being gay. We're like, oh my God, you're so brave. But mm -hmm. if there's any opposite of that, I feel like there is some stigma and backlash. And I feel like everyone's like, it's, you're more likely to be met with, um, I don't know, not hate because that's too intense, but, you know, something disappointment. Yeah. You know, people are like, oh, my God, we lost another one. And it's like, I don't know. It's not fair. I feel like we should be as accepting as like of queer people who date heteronormatively as we are of queer people who date homo, homo, <laughs> homo, like that. whatever. <laughs> anyway. I really know what I'm talking about over here. But you were like out as a, a lesbian. Were you, a, did you identify as a lesbian when you were younger? Yes. I, I had nothing to like show me otherwise. Yeah. Like I had only dated girls and I like didn't, like men didn't like exist to me for like a very long time. Fair. Cause like I just assumed I would, I was straight until it was very clear to me one day I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, questioning it for ages and I just never liked boys like I only saw girls and I was like so in love with this one girl that like I didn't care about anybody else like mm -hmm. not even other girls and it just like went on like that for years and then it just made no sense to me that I would even be bi I was like no I like, <laughs> haven't even spoke to a guy in like six years what am I doing and then yeah it came like a <laughs> fucking shock because I was always the person that was like I can't say one thing and then go back yeah which is fucked up. You should be able to do no, that. No, it should be so much more fluid. Like, yeah. Although I think if I came out as straight or bi tomorrow, <laughs> people might be like, what the fuck? <laughs> but even I could do it if I wanted to. Yeah, no. of course. But it's, I don't know. I, I, for me, I was also like, 
I never wanted to tell my parents something and have them maybe be like, this is a phase or mm-hmm. you're gonna figure something else out and then have to prove them right. Like mm-hmm. that was gonna piss me the fuck off. And ironically, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> I um, have been like, obviously I had, I actually had my first girlfriend when I was 15 mm-hmm. and or my first like whatever when I was 15. And from that point, I pretty much thought I was queer, like gay, like a full on lesbian. And I was like, I'm never gonna tell my parents because what if I'm not? And it was like my biggest fear. My mum ended up finding out whatever, but I didn't tell my dad. I never told him. I told my dad that I like girls when I was 22 years old. What? Wait, no, I was 21. I was about to turn 22. That's a long time into you liking girls also, because you started at 15. Terrified. And yeah. he uh, he was starting to be like, has this bitch never had a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I've gone through four heartbreaks. That's so <laughs> like, sad. I had never, like, I think he knew. Well, he told me later. He was like, yeah, bitch. Like, duh. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I told him, I was like, hey, like, I, uh, you've probably noticed I don't like boys. Tell me why I met my boyfriend. Like, three, no, <laughs> three no. months after, I was like, of course. Like, I feel like that, like, universe, like, needed me to, like, take yeah. that step to be like, ah, ha, ha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. I wonder if there's anything to say about the fact that you were even scared that that label might change, that, like, you maybe knew a little bit. That you, I think so. Right? I think I was, like, really, because con- I am a, <laughs> I'm a physical learner. Like, I, <laughs> <laughs> I can't, like, strategize, like, I can't just think my way into, like, mm-hmm. an answer. And I really had never like had that kind of an experience. Yeah. So I was like, I can't, I don't feel like I personally can be sure until like I've had that. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I feel like that's got to be something. Because I don't feel like when I was coming out, that wasn't like a fear I had, you know? Right. Yeah. Because I was like, oh, fuck. It's, it's for obviously sure. like, and it's the same thing I tell my straight friends. Like if you're scared that you like girls, like straight people tend not to like, yeah. worry about it. <laughs> Yeah. And I should have just like applied that to my own life and been like, the reason you're agonizing over like mm-hmm. what label you are is is because, because it's not straightforward. Like you're yeah. not one thing or the other, you know. So, but I was just, it's hard to see like logic when you're in it and you're oh my like God, experiencing it. Also when you're 21, 22, like that's really young. I know. I think I'm appreciating that more now. I'm like, yeah. I felt like I should have had everything figured out, but like, what the fuck? No. Like, why would you? Just because you had experiences younger too, I feel like maybe you thought you should know more but it's like yeah you shouldn't no No one should also like everything is so much more fluid now than I feel like like there are there's so much power in a label of just like making you know who your community is but there's also like it can get so toxic if you let it control the narrative of your life like you're like oh I have to be a lesbian I have to wear these clothes do these things it's like none of this is really that deep anymore yeah but it really was deep it was so, it was oh really my god deep. i wish that i could like speak with like 16 year old me because mm-hmm. like the amount of shit that was in her head about like th- like even just like the fact that i used to dress exactly like you <laughs> 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 like that's so like i and because i was like the only queer one in my group of friends like that kind of gave me like a like a persona to mm-hmm. fit into and they always used to say things about it and like I was like the lesbian and it, it was like in every aspect like any part of you it's went literally to, your people, identity like, yeah like they would introduce me as their gay friend or their lesbian friend or like you kind of like, like stoked this is Madeline, like... she's lesbian I'd be like <laughs> I was not <You're>... stoked <laughs> <laughs> like I know what if I'm not a lesbian you guys could change that's crazy that you met your boyfriend three months after you came out to your dad it was something like that yeah but like quick yeah yeah <sighs> Uh, Uh, of course of course do you feel like coming out like do you feel like dating men after then makes do you feel like people don't think you're as queer that you're when you're in like a straight relationship yes but I also I get it because when I was like struggling to accept the fact that I even liked girls and like I would look at bisexual people and I would just be like jealous of them and it doesn't make them less queer but I was like I'm jealous of the fact that you can Mm -hmm. have a boyfriend and a husband. Mm -hmm. And like, that was all I wanted. So I was like, we're not the same. Like we are the same, but you have something I want and I physically cannot obtain Mm -hmm. and it's not fair. So now that I'm like in a position where I'm like, okay, now I know I could have this experience and like have this walk of life. I do feel different about it, but 
it's it doesn't make you less queer no because that part sure. of your life is still 100 percent intact mm-hmm. but it it's just like a different life experience yeah totally mm. uh, also like just being around like dating and m- dating men i don't even know obviously because it's been years but like then you're also probably in more heteronormative like spaces too because you have a boyfriend who has guy friends who have probably girlfriends yeah. who have you know what i mean it's so fucking weird it's so different <laughs> it's different I it's, re- it's really weird and like pe- people have to fill me in on like no this should make you concerned or like this should make you jealous or like this shouldn't fly i'm like why because like my ex-girlfriend like you're never gonna tell your girlfriend she can't have like female friends I know. like what the fuck and like they can have sleepovers and like yeah they can be naked together like i, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know like they can kiss i don't know <laughs> just kiss words have words. sex and go on dates <laughs> <laughs> but like you know it's so different it and is I'm like the lines are way more blurry mm-hmm. in like a queer relationship just between friendships in general like and what friends you share with each other you know what i mean yeah the whole thing is different like, i can't even imagine i'm learning yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm like stressed out for you but yeah, also it sounds i don't know i think i'm high a part of me is envious also especially going through like breakups and multiple big breakups within queer relationships because you do inevitably like kind of lose friends every time oh my god do you know what i mean because Mm -hmm. things get so mushed together Mm -hmm. and it's kind of impossible even in the healthiest best breakup ever it's like i don't really want to hang out with my ex-girlfriend that much yeah like and i don't think she would want to hang out with me you know so it's like things get (laughs) fucked up like that and then you watch like a straight couple break up and it's like obviously the girls are taking the girls and the guys are taking the guys mm-hmm. or or it's very clear which friend is which friend yeah and no one would ever be like hey we invited so and so because you wouldn't do that but yeah. with queer friend groups you're like of course you have that's your friend too yeah we're all friends and then you're like but this is a miserable experience <laughs> yeah like this has happened to me recently give you time <laughs> <laughs> i don't miss that i'll be honest no but it's 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 nice because like I like that everyone knows each other, I but know. also everyone knows everyone each knows other. It. It's fun when it's fun and it's yeah. terrible <laughs> when it's terrible. You're like, yeah. I would love some separation actually mm-hmm. now. Yeah, some boundaries perhaps, not, but no, you don't boundaries. get that. <laughs> no, I've never even heard of them before. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, do you feel, even though now you're kind of in a straighter world right this second, but do you feel like the queer scene in the UK is different than here? Have you ever really been that immersed in it, do you feel? I haven't been immersed in the queer scene here. here. Well, I've barely ever been here. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah, thanks. Um, I don't know, I need to check it out. But like, I don't know. I wonder if it's universal. People were saying, people who were asking me were saying it is really different, but I know the influencer world is really different here versus yeah. the UK. Do you 100%. feel that way? Oh, 100%. Yeah. yeah. Which one do you like better? Um. I don't partake <laughs> in either of them. But you really do. You are like, go. you're like full influencer now, I feel. Yeah, but I don't feel like I necessarily am in those social circles. Mm-hmm. So I feel like it's, I, I don't feel like it's such a life experience for me, which I kind of want to do more of it and just like check it out. But I don't know. It's definitely, I, I don't enjoy the London one. That's for it's, sure. Like really? I, I, I went out a couple times when I started doing everything else and then I was like, absolutely fucking not. I'm never going out again. Well, the thing that I always thought was weird when I was friends with, you know Rose and Rosie? I f- <laughs> fucking love Rose and Rosie. <laughs> me too. I love them so much. <laughs> they used to talk to me about the UK like influencer scene and how they're you, they're almost like treated like, like traditional talent, like traditional celebrities there because in LA influencers definitely feel like influencers like they're like a sub tier of like right a list hollywood but that's because we're in hollywood so right if you're going to an event like there's a chance that billy eilish and jacob lordy and like real like a list talent will be there versus they were saying in the uk it's a much smaller just like a scene of even like the celebrities that you guys have there that's definitely true actually yeah Yeah. so then influencers are almost like a list celebrities right I don't know like I've never dabbled enough to like really understand just because I'm bad at that stuff but like it's de- like influencers have their own space here yeah whereas Definitely. yeah in London it's not kind of it's kind of like, like, like mesh yeah yeah it's like everyone's in one place mm-hmm. just 
shoved in. Because it's just smaller in general, too, I feel. Yeah, it's tiny. Right? And, like, like anyone that becomes successful, like, in the acting world, the music world, they leave. <laughs> like, yeah. No one stays. Yeah, that's so true. So, they're here. They're here. They're yeah. literally here. Yeah. I know. There's it no is... point, really, staying in London unless you love the rain. Yeah. I kind of love the rain. Do you really? I know, which makes no sense because I'm here, but... <laughs> yeah. I it's been to... raining a lot here though i know it's, it's been crazy it rained more this year than it has in like the last two years already really it, yeah and it's only april yeah cute fun fact about the weather <laughs> i saw that on tiktok I mean, it might not be true honestly. <laughs> yeah. i will say anything i see from tiktok like it is it is a fact yeah, yeah obviously 100%. and unless you're gonna double check like that's your problem yeah. now you know what i mean <laughs> yeah like I told you I'm what I knew. I'm repeat the same misinformation. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And that's how that works. Do you believe in marriage? Believe in it? Yeah, like do you think you'll get married? <laughs> um I don't give a fuck about it personally. Really? Yeah. Like I don't You don't want kids. Do you? <sighs> I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. Like I know that I have a big like maternal bone, mm -hmm. but I don't know if I want my own kids yeah and i feel like because i spent from age 15 to 22 just thinking that i was only ever going to be with women i became very attuned to the idea that i may not have my own kids mm. or like would have to go about it some other way and i never really loved the idea of ivf i don't know why i just like i read about it and i was like i don't want to do that i yeah. don't i don't know why i was just like if i'm in this position i would rather like i've always thought i would get old and like gain a load of money and life experience and then foster <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> and then it's like you help someone but it's also less commitment yeah <laughs> but you actually have the facilities to like do something so true i don't know if i want my own kids like, i mean you're also 23 so also i'm 23 <laughs> you have all the time in the world to figure but it out i would i mean i want to do the selfish thing and just see what it would look like yeah duh fair but i feel I, like we have ai for that though too when i broke up with my ex um it was so traumatic and I was like spiraling and my best friend was like so worried about me she was like why don't you just do something fucking selfish and reach out to her ex because you need someone that's gone through the same thing true and her ex and me we didn't have like the best relationship like that was like when shadiness you were together. and yeah it was just like a weird situation and I was like fuck it like I actually have nothing to lose and so I messaged her and she was like I so hear you come hang out with me and my girlfriend and our friends and like just come so I went and I hung out with them and like they were in this big queer friend group and it was like the best experience and we're still friends to this day shut up and did it like validate your, your like feelings of yeah like <laughs> <laughs> yes and just seeing someone that had like got through her I was like okay I'm gonna like live yeah and um that someone that would like believe me because like the biggest thing was like no one believed me everyone was like she would Ooh. never have done this and i was like oh she would have yeah. like yes yeah, she fuck and everyone was like no you're crazy like you're... everyone everyone told me i was crazy Ugh. and i was like guys she's evil you don't understand <laughs> <laughs> and everyone like no one believed me and i was like okay what's fuck, like fuck you guys what's like something evil she would do she like <sighs> I, I hate talking shit about her because i genuinely just think that she W is struggling like yeah yeah yeah. but she i've just never experienced someone like her like she was so it was it was like having a kid mm. have you ever been in that kind of relate where like, you're, the, you're the sole caretaker yeah i know i know what you mean 100 percent. yeah and it, it was just crazy like the the manipulation was on like another level and i was so in it like i couldn't and when i so when i got out i was like no one's gonna believe me because she's so good at this Ugh. like she's got everyone like wrapped around her pinky finger and i tried to tell people like she did this to me and she did this to me and this is why i broke up with her and then she went around like telling people oh, that doing that because like... yeah she's like because of the fact that i broke up with her mm -hmm. she was like now i'm really depressed and now i'm gonna like hurt myself and i was everyone was like you're evil because look what you did to her and i'm like like I, you don't I, just break up with someone out of nowhere <laughs> by the way what, just, the just like, what and it was just like this crazy spiral of like what is going why are you saying this stuff like i don't understand and no one believed me it was like the crazy I, I actually do like in hindsight think people did believe me and just didn't care and that's fine you know whatever that sucks <laughs> yeah, i don't know if that's better or worse i don't know either but it, it's like r like rationally i look back and i'm like 
there's no way yeah there's like no way people didn't see what was going on there yeah and like but also we were young too right i feel like we have some mentality when we're younger that like relationships should be that crazy yeah like love is crazy you should be miserable all the time yeah like the whole like like when's like the emotional intensity i feel like is a lot more normal in Mm -hmm. queer relationships yeah like it's not like even now i see the same trope of like you haul lesbians and like everything moves so quickly and i hate it because i'm like guys it's not healthy like it's not healthy no one should ever be saying i love you within yeah even a yeah maybe like (laughs) let alone a one week (laughs) i'm like what is she gonna say no it is it's so hard i feel like it's so hard with lesbian relationships to be able to tell the difference between love bombing and like you hauling and what is like what's happening organically and what is just like an overwhelming connection also two women together i feel like there's like a safety there that you don't get yeah. with men maybe it's so hard for me to ever talk about anything relating to men because i'm like i don't know <laughs> i've like, not met one <laughs> i don't talk to any so good for you i have one friend and he's bi so you know close enough yeah i think i talked about him in my last episode too i'm glad they're doing some like gardening over there yeah, yeah. <laughs> hopefully you won't hear it yeah but no you're right like it's hard like because you're so like you wouldn't ever have like a qualm about becoming friends with a girl super quickly mm-hmm. and girls do that like yeah. you meet in a bathroom at a party and your best friends and like me, 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 me. totally and so easy and then you're on a date with one and like the last date i went on with a girl we spent like three days together classic yeah and like and that happens. was just like normal i don't know I actually i posted a tiktok about that one okay. and it was like i was still living at university and it was like when that uh, you it was like such a micro trend it was like red flags in my room mm-hmm. and then i pan around and it was like the girl who hasn't left for like three days and it was like one of my first tiktoks that ever like got views and of i was course. like kind of embarrassed because she saw it and i was like oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Oh. <laughs> but yeah she was insane um we met went for dinner um and then she stayed over all was good all was well and then the next day i was kind of like okay bye yeah nope she no. was like i have to go home do you want to come with me i was like no not really and <laughs> she was like no please 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 come with me i was like mm, okay we drove like an hour and a half to her no. home i met her mom what i went into her family home what uh-huh and then she came back with me to my flat were you prepared for that no okay and like i'm just really bad at like letting it be known like hey get the oh. fuck out my house like i can't i if i hint to you and you don't get it i guess we're just gonna hang out a little bit longer literally <laughs> me i'm like i guess are you moving in yeah you can stay you can stay if i like give if i tell anyone anything about my feelings and i feel like they didn't catch it i'm like never trying that again yeah same it's hard it's so like, hard. i really need someone that's like emotionally intelligent because i won't say it twice yeah no same One of the things I loved most about being in a long distance relationship, because I was in one for a while, was the balance of life where there was like you were for I was almost forced to be really present in my own life because she wasn't there. And then when we were together, we were forced to be really present with each other. So Mm -hmm. there's like kind of something beautiful about a long distance relationship. Although I think the toxic part is then you can also like have rose colored glasses and envision that person to be whoever you want them to be you know when they're not around it's just like you are this perfect beautiful person and then then sometimes when you get together and you're together for a long time you're like oh my god i forgot you do that thing that annoys me and you do that thing that annoys me (laughs) you do that thing that's true but it is nice like coming together and like you know you've got a set amount of time so you Mm -hmm. really like treasure it yeah that's really nice yeah it helps you appreciate it in its own little and it's like makes it really intense too yeah it's like but it it, it, you also run the risk of like staying in that like honeymoon phase for way too long and Mm -hmm. then you're three years deep and you're like i don't like you (laughs) (laughs) you've just moved in and actually like i don't even know you actually like i'm even my best friend is long distance and we always have been like since we were like 12 we met online Mm -hmm. but she lives near me but not near enough to like see her every week and we like lived together for the first time two years ago how did that go i love her (laughs) like (laughs) i would never live with her again yeah i was like damn like i really did not know this about you like just the way you are (laughs) it's just just something about who you are (laughs) 
<laughs> kind of bothering me. Yeah, so, yeah. It, that is scary about relationships too, like actual romantic relationships. But I feel like that even if you're around someone, I don't. Have you ever lived with a partner? Um, very yes. Yeah, my ex girlfriend. We okay. did um a little bit of lockdown together. together. Oh, I've done that before. That was bad. Yeah, that's the last time I lived with a partner too. Would Ugh. you do it again? Ever? <laughs> well, after the first, I lived with my first girlfriend, and I thought to myself, like, it felt it felt like it really uh streamlined that relationship, like made the pace of it way faster. Right. Because we were and we were young. I was probably your age. I just felt like it maybe that relationship would have worked better if we hadn't had to live together. But we lived together for. Like we had to live together because right. of like money and travel. Like we didn't have enough money to not live together. So after that, I just told myself, if I can afford not to live with a partner, I'm not going to for as long as possible. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> for as long as possible. And then, yeah, and then COVID, I had to for a second, but that was technically my ex-girlfriend. Oh. Which is <laughs> even worse, I would say, than living with your partner. Did you like Oh, it? she was your ex when you lived together? Yeah. Oh, the whole That's time. That's so gay. That's <laughs> so gay. It was so gay. I mean, it was fine. It was like exactly uh, the Julia Michaels and JP Sachs song. Like, if the world was ending, you'd come over, right? Oh. It was oh, just God. that in real life oh, happening. God. And we did. We came over. But <laughs> <laughs> did you like the experience at all? Like, were there any pluses to it? Or did you just hate living together? I hated it. Got it. I hope she doesn't watch this. I don't. <laughs> I don't know if she watches you. My one of my exes does. Hey, <laughs> hey, <laughs> miss you. <laughs> um, but no, I I I didn't enjoy it because she was unemployed mm. and I was a key worker through most of the pandemic or like through the part where it hit and mm-hmm. like a year after. What were you doing? I worked in like a little farm. Cute. Yeah. Um. And so I would like go to work and my shifts were like 10 hours and I would come back and she would just be there. <laughs> <laughs> Always. There nowhere, to, nowhere to go really. <laughs> no. And we were living in like, um, she was, she had like a pretty rich family. And so they had like their main family house. And then they had a couple like little buildings on their property that we made into like a little house. So we were living with her family, but mm-hmm. we were like separate from them. Cause I was a worker and her mom was like unwell. Yeah that's difficult Mm -mm. it it wasn't my favorite thing in the world and just like i was too young as well to like know how to do that we didn't have like our kitchen was like like it didn't function and like there was like wrappers everywhere and like it was like romantic like we, we <laughs> like it was rat piss everywhere it was like followed a, a by it was down. romantic yeah yeah <laughs> like it was a nice like i look back and i'm like oh it was sweet like we had like she had like 20 cats and like we just like had a little porch and like she lived in the countryside like it was cute mm-hmm. but um but I wouldn't do it again oh but would you live with a partner again obviously at some point i'm sure yeah at some point yeah. but like in a house with more than like one room yeah that's ideally same yeah and like also now doing the work i do i <laughs> <laughs> i don't know like i would need a lot more space yeah it's, it's it is so bizarre because you really if you work from home i mean do we even work from what do we do i don't know how do we, <laughs> how do, we do this i don't it's, know it's so confusing but yeah you definitely need your own personal space i've learned over the years but yeah, yeah. also i don't know like i also don't know when do i even want to live with a partner because i feel like i'd want to live with a partner before i married a partner yeah you gotta try it yeah but i also feel like being gay you end up having so many sleepovers anyway I'm like i can pretty much picture what this would be like you know yeah Ugh. that's true you uh, yeah like yeah. i've had relationships where we don't live together but like we might as well right mm-hmm. it's like that's the vibe yeah especially like flip-flopping back and forth do you feel like you typically like to stay at your house or do you like to stay at your partner's house i this is like my biggest toxic trait i love staying at someone else's really? house to the point if they don't have 
like a like a life that I can go and like walk. You know when mm-hmm. like I've had relationships where we're in my world, mm-hmm. and I've had relationships where I'm in their world. Yeah, I way prefer the ones where I'm in their really? world. Really? Yeah. Like, yeah. and now I'm learning to manage it and be like, hey, like I actually have a life and a job, and I need to like yeah, continue maybe. living mine. Mm-hmm. But I love when they have a world I can go into. I feel That's so much more involved and like so interesting. I wonder why. I feel like I'm the opposite really i feel like i have a world and i like my world Uh, i guess i think i'm getting better (laughs) am i i think i'm getting i like to be both i just think that the one thing that i'm really really hope happens in my future is keeping my worlds like a little bit separate Mm. like having crossover but never having everything a mesh together again because i've done it multiple times and it never goes well every time i'm like what the fuck why did that happen again but it's just so hard i think uh yeah but i i it's nice to like go be like a side character rather than like the main character when you're bringing someone around your friends and stuff and you have to be the one that's like do 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 it's like being the host of a podcast versus being a guest of a podcast (laughs) you're just hosting all the time i'd I'd like to guest please (laughs) yeah I know it's like it's I don't know why it's so hard to find balance like between two worlds it's so I feel like it the older you get too it gets I don't know if it's getting easier or harder because now I have way more of like a a life you know Mm. at 32 than at 23 like my life was very like chaotic and now I've like had some of the same friends for like 10 years you Mm. know versus I don't know I feel like when I was 23 I was my friend group was changing all the time right do you feel that way your friend group or is it the same i'm very consistent <laughs> <laughs> but Perfect. i'm trying to meet new people but my core friends have been the same for as long as i can that's nice. remember yeah if you were in any world ever to move to la who do you think you would like hang out with i have no idea <laughs> <laughs> I don't know i'm panicking yeah i don't like i don't know I, this is well, why i'm going to coachella to like to meet, meet people really i hate coachella like i don't have I'm, you been before no and i already know i, I feel like you could it. like it no who are you going with uh my best friend millie from manchester in the uk Fuck yeah. i don't know if anyone from manchester's even ever gone to coachella she may be the first, <laughs> first <laughs> it's actually actually she's from sheffield but um which is worse but <laughs> <laughs> sorry Millie. um but then yeah we're going with guests okay so we'll have like the house and yeah. it'll be like pleasant yeah but i'm really just going to like meet people i don't enjoy heat or live music or walking or having to wear outfits or oh my god you're gonna love coachella <laughs> <I know. laughs> everything you just said i'm like I know. i'm worried about you <laughs> you can definitely make friends though that's yeah yeah and millie is like so social we used to when we were younger she's straight as you as they come which is crazy to me millie sounds like a straight girl name i know doesn't it, it? is so she would hate that <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. but yeah it does like she is actually maybe she's gonna get offended by this is she no she is i think we've been through this a hundred times but um, you don't have to stay any one way yeah, anyone Millie, you, we'll accept you you but... can change tomorrow <laughs> we'll accept you in this group don't worry um she and i used to obsessively watch rose and rosie and i like introduced her i was like trying to like soft launch the fact that i like girls That's <laughs> so cute. Like, look at these people they're really funny and she loved them and we still like whenever we like hang out in person we'll like get together and watch their old videos from That's when they were like so first dating <laughs> i can't they like film their second date ever they're crazy they did didn't yeah. they was it the one where they were like on the floor i think they're like on a, the side of a bed or something or maybe it is the floor they've got like a blue wall or the some lighting shit is really them. bad it's really bad <laughs> yeah. yeah i need I, to rewatch it oh my god there's certain videos on youtube that i've watched probably like oh yeah 500 comfort times. videos for yeah. sure you had one that was mine i used to listen to it as if it was on like fucking spotify what like is on it? repeat it was the letter no. to you one do you not like that video no no i do like it oh I my god like I, that video used to fuck me up i would literally sit there and sob that's so sweet. <laughs> no, I still like that video, but I think it's just hard. I look so little when I watch it. I'm yeah, like, you do. Because I rewatched it before coming on the podcast. And I was yeah. like, oh my god. I know. But that was also the era of clothing where I was like, yeah, it's definitely the era of clothing. I've got my ripped jeans and my. I mean, not that much has changed, honestly. I'm not evolving like the jeans too got crazy. baggy. Yeah, they're, they're looser. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, that's crazy, though. I fucking love Rose and Rosie. Okay, wait. Back to Coachella. I need to process you going somewhere where you're going to be miserable the whole time. Mm-hmm. What Do you get to wear guests? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. Yeah. Are you going to go to, like, Revolve Fest or any of those things? I think so. Th- think that gonna... seems fun. Yeah. I haven't been drunk in the longest time because I tried to stop drinking. And so I'm excited to just, like, go crazy and let loose and be stupid. It's, like, hard to even get drunk at Coachella because it's so hot that you're sweating. (laughs) But you will. You will. Don't don't take that. I'll find a way. (laughs) Yeah, you you will be fine. Uh, I I really wanted to go to Coachella this year. Why aren't you going? Well, I'm going to Canada now instead. Do you know my friend Vanessa? She was in some of those pictures. She's, like, I don't know. My friend is opening for Noah Khan on tour. Do you know Jensen McRae? She's like a TikToker. I feel like she maybe. sings that song that's like about Massachusetts and her favorite Batman is Christian Bale because <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst explanation ever. <laughs> anyway, she's opening for Noah Khan and my friend Kevin is playing guitar. That's so, so cool. I feel like that will be. That's way fucking better than Coachella. Yeah. Way I think better. it'll be better than Coachella. Oh. But I feel like you will make friends there. Are you looking for like gay friends, straight friends? Any take friends? anything at this point <laughs> <laughs> like influencer friends I, I, anything anything <laughs> okay would be appreciated i just like yeah like i love being alone mm-hmm. i say it all the time but that i have my limits and yeah. i have been alone for like three weeks and i'm like i'm gonna go fucking insane like yeah. i full transparency you're getting a weird version of me right now because i did not sleep last night i've what? got to the point where i'm just like I feel more at night and I have to stay up and like do witchcraft and so I was up (laughs) all night and I'm on like my second celsius of the day and these things don't sit well with me so I'm already like yeah I know Sam you have one too I know so young why is everyone drinking them all the time I don't know because they're they're, like they're hard like they make me feel like I'm hungover oh my god they make my like face twitch when I talk to people and I'm like can they see that (laughs) like I feel like I'm like secretly drunk in public when I shouldn't be but like I just they give me a little bit of uh I don't know like like they almost give me like the same level of confidence that being drunk does I'm like I know yeah. like not at all but like it makes me more like I want to have a conversation yeah that's good as opposed to not not <laughs> <laughs> wait what witchcraft are you doing <laughs> I need to know so lately I've been listening to the audiobook version of The Law of Attraction, mm-hmm. which is actually like I've read parts of the book, but the audiobook is scary. Have you ever listened to no. it? Because she's like channeling this spirit called Abraham the whole time okay. and she's talking like him. And it's like a weird So I've been like getting back into my like little manifestation grind. Fuck and yeah. I've just been like sitting up like chanting things. No. It's like it's not pleasant. <laughs> <laughs> i was up all night <laughs> what what are we manifesting um i don't like just just like a feeling like okay. I, nothing like i don't have any specifics at the moment i'm just trying to get back into a place where i'm like i feel good about myself so i'm trying to like convince myself through lies yeah. <laughs> <laughs> through lies and witchcraft yeah. that you feel good about yourself and the only way i can like get that emotional response is if i'm up really late like it doesn't happen for me really the yeah like at night it's so exciting for me i feel like i get that a little bit i i always end up editing my podcast until like the second it comes out which is at 3 a.m oh but i feel God. like i don't get good at editing until like 2 20 a.m yeah <laughs> and i'm like holy shit it, it needs to be up in like five seconds but why i feel do like do I, it at 3 a.m like why does it upload at that hour oh because it's 6 a.m east coast and i'm trying to get people who are commuting to work oh clever interesting that's, that's what i've been told to do okay but i don't even know what time write that down. what time that is yeah what time do you <laughs> upload midnight 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 la time perfect 7 a.m uk time so it's the same yeah kind of kind of yeah true. yeah but you don't edit it but you did you used to Mm -hmm. I used to do everything myself and now I have an editor who does it for me but does it make your life better (sighs) yeah I still have to go through it and like pick out things I don't want so I'm like which we said earlier like that's the longest part like going through and finding the timestamps. I'm like oh life is so hard whereas if I'm just like sat on my laptop editing it and like cutting I'm like yeah it's quicker yeah it's and it's kind of fun like once you get in it I know like in it that's so true. I listen to mine in two times speed, so I literally listen to my voice like, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. cut. 
yeah. that it's like a whole system now. Anyway, no one cares about that but us, probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm jealous you're going to Coachella, and I hope that you make so many friends there. And if you want gay friends, you can be friends with... I have gay friends. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you can hang out with them. Me. <laughs> <laughs> you can have them. Do you yeah. have a type when it comes to, like, mask femme? Like, who I'm attracted to? I mean, to? I feel like you like femmes, right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Just, like, girly girls. If I yeah. could find it, that's that's usually my type. Yeah. Fair enough. They're pretty. It makes it so much easier because there's, like, four of them that exist like there's no barely any femme lesbians i feel like you think yeah do you think there's a lot i've never dated one <laughs> but they're find. my type yeah like, <laughs> no, good find. point good point good point i feel like that's why also my last two people i've dated never dated a girl before because they were so femme yeah and didn't know the girl i'm dating now how do i i'll show you after this but she's so girly i feel like a lot of like okay one relationship i had when we got together she was like very like neutral but probably more feminine mm -hmm. by the time we broke up not nah. that was a boy <laughs> <laughs> and i was like <laughs> what happened i was so like it's i don't know it like i didn't not like it no but that definitely happens i feel like that i feel like i'm still feminine myself but i definitely from the beginning of coming out to now gotten way 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 less girly do you think i just think i'm like feminine like i i like if you like meet me i'm so girl i feel right do you know what i mean but my outfits and my clothing options and then my hair got shorter the hair is everyone's like so obsessed with the length of my hair i swear i love your hair that's so nice people <laughs> go back and forth my dms are crazy really? people will just all the time but it's I've realized more and more so many people identify with me like but like also like I am th like I am them you know they're not just like <laughs> like like when people are wearing the exact same outfits as me or mm -hmm. like cutting their hair like me or whatever it's like because they want to be be me like they don't want to be my friend they don't want to oh be, like, I there's like that. this like intense like people like are like really associate deep some people no i i see i feel like if you're a shannon beverage fan that is how you say shannon beverage <laughs> like, wait. Where you both don't know how to say each other's name yeah um you go in i think there's just a moment where you're like i don't i can't even explain it i just think i can see it so much when i cut my hair because it affects people so deeply like where they're like <laughs> grow it back out grow it back out and i'm like is that your it's your own internalized homophobia but it's like because they're like thinking of their own hair. I swear to God, it's like really? they don't even care. Why do? Why would anyone care about what color, what length my hair is? But what do they think it changed? They think it made you more masculine. Yeah, or... I think they think it's like less feminine. It's not. I agree. Girly girls out here with short haircuts too. Yeah. What the fuck? I, I, yeah. What? Yeah. I don't know. It's its own thing. I, I feel like with... long straight hair is almost gayer. Gayer. It's I call way it, gayer. Literally, we call it gayer. Gay, gay hair. <laughs> like, if you have like just perfectly straight hair and you wear it straight down and you wear a hat or if it's in a ponytail all the time that's gear it, yeah it is that's such a good word yeah 100 percent. like you can cut it or style it or do something i mean right now i'm going through a really intense hat phase i'm very <laughs> like you've always been. <laughs> I, I have it's 10 year long uh, it's a long <laughs> phase so it's kind of half my life no i just go through like really intense phases where i like can't take my hat off like i will literally be what in bed hiding under that nothing crazy <laughs> <Lice. I'm> like, <laughs> you will never know no i don't know it's like it's literally i think it's honestly like an ocd type thing really yeah because and i'll also get like wear the same outfit exact same outfit and i get like stuck like i also have adhd so it's like i'll eat the same food oh same every day yeah. for like until it's the grossest thing i've ever eaten <laughs> yeah. in my life that's me and my hat right now we're in like a deep relationship the with same each other. one every day different okay they're rotating yeah. <laughs> thank god but i do i mean there's only a few i, I love I, it i'm gonna take it off soon uh, soon i need to go get my She's hair done lying. <laughs> I'm, I'm lying i've been saying that for 10 years but no i will take it off what do you have anything to like look out for just your podcast like yeah. anything coming out mm, mm, no okay weekly your week weekly podcast yeah. what day <laughs> uh mondays okay 
Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, this video, this podcast episode. You can follow Madeline on all her socials will be in the link below. And she posts her podcast every Monday. So check it out. Right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I have nothing else to say. Thanks, Thanks for having guys. me. <laughs> okay, come back sometime. Okay, bye. Okay, bye.